distinct pleasure to welcome Stéphane Martinier to give us our keynote this morning. Stéphane is a French artist who is, lives here in Dallas, uh, in fact, now. He's uh, been absolutely remarkable the, the way that he's contributed to, to this conference. He's helped us organize the, the Farm Maker Awards and uh, has shown us really what uh, the caliber of his, uh, of his work is. Uh, Hugo, um, Stefan has been uh, involved in some fascinating projects other than book illustrations and, and uh, um, the movies that, uh, that he's been involved in uh, are, some of the, are, are some that have captured our imagination from uh, The Astronaut's Wife, Battlefield Earth, Dragonheart, He's worked on uh, The Fifth Element, which uh, I personally can watch every single time it's on television. I cannot, I cannot stop watching it. Uh, I, Robot, and uh, the rumor is, Stefan can, can confirm that, that he's working on, on Phoenix Rising, which is a revival of Captain Power. And if you haven't seen Captain Power, then go watch the old ones, and then you can, we can see what the new ones are. Stefan uh, was has won multiple awards. He's uh, I just picked a couple: the British Science Fiction Association Award and the Hugo Award for Best Professional Artist in 2008. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Stefan Martinier to speak to us about his origins. Thank you. Good morning, and and thank you for coming and listen to me for about 40 minutes. Uh, uh, like uh, Andreas mentioned, I've been in that industry now for over 30 years, and I've been working as an artist, concept artist, and art director, as well as a director, in pretty much every field of the entertainment industry, from animation to film to theme parks, and doing book covers and publishings and things like that. So it's been really uh, uh, an interesting ride for me and very, very creative at the same time. Uh, I wanted to uh, share with you today uh, my career over these 30 years and make a parallel with that with some really interesting dates and events, scientific achievements that have happened as I was growing up, which also shaped my, my life and my career, which I thought was, was kind of interesting. Um, so the title, when I grew up, when I want to be, uh, when I grew up, I want to be an astronaut, uh, really started very early on when I, when I was a, a kid. So I thought that would be a good, a good way to start the whole thing. Uh, the reason I'm here today is because of these two particular images: this one here of the colony ship, and this one of the Icarus spaceship reaching a distant stars. And these images were commissioned a couple of years ago by the National Geographic. And this one here was actually an idea from the National Geographic of revamp the, 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 the idea of what a colony ship would be. And it just happened that there hadn't been any new uh, take on uh, uh, illustrations uh, for, that, for that particular concept. So everything that they had and they had for a long time was these paintings from the 60s. And they thought, you know, with all these new generation of artists have been you know, working in the field, it would be interesting to kind of ask one of them, namely me, to give a fresh look at what my vision of a colony ship would be. So I was given all the information about what had been done in the past and who had worked on this concept and came up with these wild ideas about what it could be uh, and, and, and do these, these big illustrations and, and spread for National Geographic. And which is the reason why I was invited here. Since you know that image came out, I was asked to participate to that particular event, since it is totally, you know, in tune with what what is being discussed here and has been discussed for the last four days. So I thought that was really, really great. And I usually attend, you know, the science fiction convention. So uh, to me, it was really a, an interesting opportunity to hear the hard science, the, the science behind the science fiction that I usually read all the time and, and get a sense about, you know, the, 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 uh, the speculations and, 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 and the thinking that, that, that is happening and has been happening for, for quite a while. So it was very exciting for me to be here and listen to some of the talks 
you know, over the last several days. So how did that all start? Uh, well, in 1962, uh, I was born. And interestingly enough, as I'm coming into the world, uh, 1962 was also uh, the year when John Glenn orbited the Earth. So that was maybe, you know, an interesting timing, but I thought, you know, this is a good star here. So, <laughs> so as I'm starting to grow, it, it, it became quickly, you know, like every kid draws, you know, and I'm drawing also as well, you know, it's, and maybe because of that event and, and because of things that started to happen in the space program, uh, one of the things that came to my mind very quickly is when I grew up, I want to be an astronaut. Uh, and so I started doodling, you know, these little astronauts and, and, and people going to space. And, and of course, you know, one thing leads to another. From astronauts' drawings, I'm starting to design aliens. I'm thinking of aliens, and so it goes from the friendly aliens, you know, to other types of aliens, to, of course, the not so friendly aliens, because kids like to do things that are also very bloody gory. And so I'm kind of growing up slowly. And then as I'm growing up, you know, in the, in, in the 60s, uh, so around 1968, 70, I'm about eight years old. And I'm being introduced in France to uh, some very important uh, uh, comic books that are going to shape uh, my life uh, come moving forward as well as some very interesting uh, movies coming out. And so one of them was, was Spiru. And Spiru was a, a magazine uh, filled with you know, wonderful artists uh, that were very uh, comic oriented and very cartoony. So that was one of uh, the side of my career that, that really that I embraced as an artist is doing a lot of things that are very cute and cartoony. But at the same time, I was also reading another comic book uh, that was really more about science fiction and with wonderful artists you know, that were uh, paving the way for, for some, some really incredible art. And so I was really passionate right away about, about, about both and, and very attracted with you know, the cartoony style as well as the re real realistic style uh, and, and different subject like you know, yeah, science fiction. And then, you know, these happened as well. And Tintin for me was really a, a, a landmark. Uh, Tintin was this very adventurous young character going into these, these uh, uh, wild adventures. And these particular two albums that were created were actually done even way before we first walked on the moon. And there was already that. And, and that particular artist was very interesting because he always worked with very, very hard data every single frame of these comics was based on very, very accurate, uh, you know, thinking or drawings or, and so everything was, was very real. And, and these two particular stories, one following the other, were, were really uh, amazing to me because that was the start of, you know, going into space, you know, and, and what it would be and, and, and reaching out, out there. And then at the same time as I was reading that, I was also very much into fantasy. So I like these little cutesy, you know, characters. And then uh, around the same time, when I was eight years old, I was introduced to uh, a movie that was also going to really shape my, my career. Uh, 2001, a Space Odyssey. And to me, that, that, that film was absolutely mind-bending. It's like I, I came out of that movie, my dad took me there, and uh, I was almost in a trance. I was like, I was like what just happened right there? It's, it's, it's like, and, and I had so many questions because that, that movie raised some very profound questions that I had to get the book and read the book and try to understand what I had just seen. And I've seen that movie now, you know, a dozen times, and it's, it's still a classic to me. And, and that, that really shaped, in terms of the visual that it produced, as well as the type of ideas that it brought in, and really shaped, you know, a lot of things that I did later on as an artist. And so, surely enough, 1969, a year after that, Apollo lunar landing. Big, big day for, for, for many people, and for me as well. So, as this event happens, of course, at the same time, I'm starting to get introduced to movies like The Day of the Earth Stood Still and The Forbidden Planet. And, and then something happens during the, 60, the 70s and, and in a couple of years. Uh, and I'm calling that colorful spaceships and spandex because something really important happens uh, at this period of time artistically is there was that wonderful artist called Chris Voss that introduced a whole new vision of what spaceship could, could be. 
And, and if you remember at the time in the 60s and 70s, it was all about shiny rockets and Buck Rogers. And so everything was, was really particular in, in, its, in its own look. And suddenly this guy comes in and, and says, well, space could look like this. And spaceship could look like that. And it was just like a slap in the face for the entire community. It's like, oh my God, never seen anything like that. And so and to me, that was also you know, something very, very uh, remarkable and, and, and really shaped right away you know, how I wanted to approach also my own, my own visions, my own designs. And as you can see, you know, he was even really way, way ahead of the curve in terms of even designing ideas that were taken and, and, and inspired Star Wars you know, later on and things like that. And then at the same time as I was discovering Chris Foss and I was getting some, some, a, a better sense about what I wanted to be and how I wanted to, to, to be as an artist, you know, I was also introduced to the whole world of superheroes from, from the United States, namely with two very particular magazines that were published, published in France, uh, one being Strange and the other one being Marvel. And so I became a big fan of the Silver Surfer and Iron Man at the same time as I was doodling these monsters and doing these astronauts and, and trying to get really, really uh, you know, involved in wanting to be a science fiction artist. So all these, these things you know, were kind of like part of my world on a daily basis. And then as I'm continuing you know, to, to grow and, and, and being bombarded with these uh, artistic uh, uh, Information 1973, the, the launch of Skylab One, you know, another big, big landmark that, that happened as I was growing up. And then 1974, for me at the same time, I'm being introduced to another artist that was also very influential to me called Bernie Wrightson, uh, who did a, a, a comics called The Swamp Thing, and wonderful, wonderful designs. And incidentally, I became a very good friend later on. Uh, with him and got to work on several projects together. So this was something very, uh, very rewarding for me. Uh, then 1973, Pioneer 10, flyby of Jupiter. So as, as things progress, as I'm growing up, as I'm kind of getting more and more into that, you know, the space program is also advancing in its own, in its own way. Then 1976, Viking 1 lands on Mars. So another landmark. And then also 1976, that's the year I discover heavy metal. And heavy metal also reshaped a lot of things in the industry and got me into a whole new directions of what I could be doing as an artist and, and got me to be influenced in many different ways with artists like Drouillet and, and Mezier and Mobius, uh, which were very, very visionaries at the time. The same way Chris Forrest introduced new ways of, of looking at the future and looking at some spaceship, these artists introduced a whole new way of what science fiction could look like. Uh, and the subject that could be explored and the stories that could be told. And then 1977 happened and Star Wars <coughs> was released. And that also became everything, everything changed. Um, new way of looking at films, new way of looking at the space opera, reintroductions of uh, the big operatic music. And so this also, I was about 14, 15 when that happens. That totally solidified at that point about what I was going to be doing as a career. I knew I wanted to be in a science fiction field. I knew I wanted to draw spaceships and astronauts and aliens, and I wanted to be involved in it. Now, I didn't know exactly yet how, how it was going to happen, but I knew this is what I was going. So then, one thing leads to another. I'm going to art school, because this is where I have to do. If I want to be as good as a, a Chris Foss and a Mobius and a Mezier, I have to go and I have to learn the trade. So art school, obviously, you know, have to learn all the basic foundations, anatomy and perspective and all the, the good stuff. And the idea is, of course, to become a Michelangelo, or at least to be as good as one. But, you know, it's like it's not always very easy. So sometimes, you know, you have difficulties and the art is not always what you want. And sometimes it's pretty disastrous as well. <laughs> but, you know, you have to go. You go with the flow. You learn. You learn the ropes and, you know, you get better and better. And as I'm st starting to learn the craft, uh, 1979, Alien gets released. And boom, another landmark film for me about a whole new way of, of looking at science fiction, uh, introducing the, the greedy and the dirty, the kind of blue color in space. Uh, it's not Buck Rogers anymore. It's, it's really a new vision about what it could be sending people out there. And of course, you know, with the drama of an alien story and monsters, just to create something interesting. And then Star Trek. Star Trek happened, and to me it was also very important too because I was in France 
So Star Trek didn't have a popularity in France that it has in the States. So I didn't know anything about the TV series that was already going on, that was extremely popular here. I was, I discovered Star Trek by the first movie that, 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 that was made. And to me, Star Trek, the movie was, was interesting, was fun, uh, but really what, what, what Mark, what was really important in there is the vision, vision of that particular ship in there. And, and that imagery for at least five minutes of movies was absolutely stunning. Uh, the, 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 the vision behind that object that grew in space that was launched and come back to Earth and has gathered all these things and comes back to meet the maker was incredible. I thought the idea was brilliant and, and I thought the look of that particular ship was, was really incredible. And that to me got me really, really excited. Uh, and then as I'm learning and continue to learn, 1981, the space shuttle's first flight. You know, things are happening also. People are just doing wonderful things. And then 1981, my first flight, and I'm going to Japan. So now I'm kind of like finishing my, my last years of art school, and I'm being sent to Japan to work on Inspector Gadget. <laughs> uh, so it's one of the things I was doing. I was learning animations as well as I was doing a lot of things, and this was my first job. First job, sending to Japan. And of course, you know, going to Japan, me and I have never been out of France. I'm envisioning Japan as, you know, these beautiful sceneries and these old houses and the blossoming of the cherry trees and stuff. And of course, I'm getting there and I'm getting these. <laughs> and I have absolutely no idea and I'm totally unprepared and I'm, 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 I'm seeing them. <laughs> and this is Japan. This is Japan. I'm this, you know, it happens. And then this, you know, this is also a new a new culture, and it's a culture shock at the same time, and of course, you know, these as well, introduced to new things. And of course, Japan is a very crowded place, so it's also very scary. It's like people by the thousands in, on the streets, and sometimes this happens as well, and it's very scary. But I'm being told, you know, it's okay, don't worry, because you know, it's worse in India. So at least you're in a good place. So, so, so it's good. And then I'm being introduced to new things that I had never seen before. So I'm, I'm discovering Godzilla and then the samurai movies. And so that also started to shape my career as well because that was part of my world. And I discovered that a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things that were happening in Japan uh, were not actually necessarily known anywhere else but Japan. So I was fortunate enough to be there at a young age to discover anime and these kind of very unique movies and that these new vi vision, you know, that were coming from, from the East. And so then I take a short break and I come back to France after Inspector Gadget, and then 1982, Blade Runner comes out. And boom, another movie that completely changed everything in terms of how, you know, you can also tell a story and, and how you could view science fictions, you know, and how, you know, the whole concept of these, you know, uh, you know um, of these characters, you know, coming back to Earth and uh, the concept of robots and space explorations and, and cloning people and creating you know, people to do the work we can do in space and things like that. So be all these very interesting ideas uh, with that kind of style, very, uh, very, uh, very interesting looking. And then 1983, uh, as I'm uh, starting my career and I've worked now on Inspector Gadget, the company sends me to Los Angeles. And also my first time in the States, so I have also no idea. So I'm envisioning, you know, sunny days and you know beautiful sceneries and of course what I'm getting in, you know the smog and the traffic you know and Big Bob and stuff. I'm introduced to the burger and so you know I'm learning again another culture and that's also a good thing I'm learning new things and I'm and I'm working on if I'm being sent there to work on that little cartoon of that kind of little quirky little cat doing you know mischievous things all the time and that's also another side of you know the, the kind of career that I was doing in the animation industry. And then, as I'm doing all that, 81, from 86 to 89, so new things happen, Voyager 2 reaches Saturn's and Uranus and Neptune's, and so things also are now progressing you know, further in space, and that's also getting very exciting at the same time. And then 1989, the Abyss, and also another, another subject about encountering an alien race and what it could be, and in that particular case, you know, something on the water. It was a beautiful movie and a very interesting take about, you know, our first contact, you know, with another civilization, uh, and then not necessarily, you know, um, from outer space. You know, that was really, really cool. And then I'm being introduced to another artist that was very influential to me, uh, John Berkey, 
and John Burke, came up also with his visions of spaceships that are absolutely marvelous and, and very unique. I've never, never seen any, anyone doing spaceship like that, coming up with this very, very weird looking shape and, 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 and wonderful, you know, ideas. At the same time as I was discovering him, you know, I was also discovering McCall, who was doing a lot of space paintings and some of them for NASA, a beautiful painter. And then John Harris. John Harris also was uh, an English painter uh, that came in the 70s, who was doing these very, very simple and beautiful paintings. So all these people, you know, were part of my career and, 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 and my life, and so were influ influencing me as I was getting better and better in a professional field. And then Los Angeles is also where I met my wife. Now, I didn't marry Barbarella, uh, but my wife is as beautiful as Barbarella, so. <laughs> And then, of course, you know, it was love at first sight, and we get married. And, uh, <laughs> and so Los Angeles was, was really important to me because as I'm getting married, then I know I'm going to be staying there. And so this also, at the same time as I make the decision to now start my career and stay there for a while, uh, 1990 is also the launch of a Hubble telescope. So, so that was kind of interesting that when I'm making this decision, these things are happening at the same time. And then, so these are the years I'm going to be working mainly in cartoons and theme parks for many years, and that's also going to be the year where the landing of Pathfinder on Mars. So that's also happening, and that's wonderful. So I'm kind of doing all these wonderful things, and then I'm seeing this happening in a space program, and that's also as exciting. And then that's also the year of, the, of where I'm landing my first film job, and that's going to be a big portion of my career there moving forward. And my first thing, my, my first movie being the fifth element. Uh, and so it's, you know, the movie industry is like any other industry, it's like a snowball effect. You know, you start with one project and if you do a good job and people like what you do, then they'll call and you work on a second one. And so as I'm moving along and starting to establish the career in the movie industry, also a lot of things are happening in a space program and then also other things are happening in space and Haley Bob shows up and I was fortunate enough to be able to have a look at it. So that was also very exciting, and I was fortunate to be high up in the mountains, having a very clear sky, to be able to see it very, very clearly, and that was pretty exciting. Uh, and I was also the year of a space station, so another landmark of, of achievement that was really exciting to see happening. Um, and then, you know, during these years, 98, that's the, the year I worked on Sphere. So as the space station is being built up, up there, I'm also working on another kind of station on the water. Uh, and it's always interesting to me the parallel between what's happening in space and the space program and all these movies that I'm working on. And it's also very intriguing to me that, you know, it's like on one way, on the science side, everything tends to uh, go towards a very uh, optimistic future. And I'm working on all these movies that are more about catastrophes and disasters. And so I always I kind of find a parallel very, very, very amusing. So I'm working on several movies like this as the year progresses, and 1999 is the year I worked on Virus virus where I designed these very monstrous, ugly creatures, and over one of these movies with first contact that goes wrong, uh, which ties to the presentation yesterday, which was actually very interesting about, you know, should we really meet E.T. if we had the chance? And, you know, the more we talk about it, the more we should say, no, we should, maybe we shouldn't. And these things can happen, you know. I mean, so that's one of the scenarios that could be really, you know, ugly for us. Uh, and then I also work on the astronaut's wife, another scenario with a first contact that goes wrong. Uh, very interesting movie, low budget, but very cool, where I got to design the, the creature, and this time it's more of an energy type creature. Uh, and then Red Planet, worked on Red Planet, designing also some of the ships and some of the creatures and some of the environments on this. And then the time machine, uh, also designing a lot of the environment, you know, working on the machine itself, you know, wonderful story. I was very fortunate to work on that because I was a big fan of the of book itself. And then Star Wars. And Star Wars for me was really important because I grew up and at 15 I got to be there when the first movie was released, never thinking that 20 years later I would be one of the artists working on the new series coming out. So that was really, really rewarding for me to have grown professionally to such a, a level that now I could be part of the legacy and what also shaped my career and be now shaping, you know, and maybe influential and being inspiring other generations of new artists the same way that these movies, you know, shaped my, my career. 
And so these are the things that I did on the Star Wars project, some of the robots and creatures, some of the environments for Coruscant. I've worked on the last two Star Wars, so there was a lot of work there. Uh, and then 2004, I worked on iRobot, another you know, beautiful story and, and an incredible project where I got to design cityscapes and the whole you know, futuristic city and how it would look like, you know, kind of like 100 years in the future and kind of project that you know, with a story that's, that's behind it. And then another movie that was very intriguing to me was Knowing. Knowing was a, also another a doomsday scenario about a solar flare that could just kill us and what could happen, and then the, the introductions of this particular being that are raising also some very interesting questions. And, and I was asked here in a very challenging project because uh, the, the director wanted to be able to transfer the idea that these beings could be either or. And so it was very important that they don't necessarily are too much uh, of, of a religious nature but at the same time, too, not too much on a scientific nature as well. So let the audience decide what they are and try to kind of go from there and, and kind of open up a discussion. And there was a lot of discussion actually that happened after that movie came up as to you know, what, what you just seen and what are these aliens and, and where do they come from? And are, are they really our interpretation of and are they, where they are at the origin of our religion and, and all these kind of interesting things. That, and it was very intriguing to me to work on that and I really enjoyed it. And then I worked in 2010 in Tron Legacy, another very interesting project about, you know, rethinking, you know, a universe, you know, that's, that's different and that's, that's very, very, uh, you know, visual. Uh, and then recently, 2012, Total Recall, and another one of these, you know, big project where I have to design a lot of the environments and cityscapes and try to come up with new ways of thinking about what cities of the future could be, uh, you know, in, a, in different worlds or on Earth or an Earth-like type scenario, uh, doing these, these incredible environments and machineries. Uh, and then, at the same time as, as I was doing a career in the book cover industry, I mean, in a film industry, I was also starting a, a whole career in the book cover. And I've, I've been reading science fiction for many, many years. And so I was familiar with all these, these interesting stories and scenarios. And so it was, it was really exciting to me to get to illustrate some of these writers to, uh, you know, and, and many of these writers are actually scientists as well. So it's interesting that I'm here even today, you know, because it's part of you know, the world that, that, that I gravitate around. And so it's very exciting to be part of you know, the side of the science and the side of the fictions and, and be part of both and, and being able to participate and, and, and share my vision as an artist, you know, to, to all, these, all these different subjects. And so these are some of the covers I'm going to show you very briefly about how I envision, you know, futures and, and, and the, kind of, uh, uh, the kind of illustrations that are being asked of me and, and the kind of vision that I can bring to the field in terms of what could be if we are there, out there in space, what could be if we colonize a planet, and this one in particular was about that, a new ways of colonizing, you know, a planet, how we, terra how we, we terraform, you know, an environment, and, and how things would happen. And it's always interesting doing book covers, because there's always a story behind. So there's a lot of, always a lot of drama, and so, you know, you work with that, and you try to envision, you know, the, the, the whole scenario with, with, with what it could look like architecturally and, and, and the habitats and the spaceships themselves. And so I always find that very fascinating. Uh, and then sometimes it goes real wild, you know, in terms of thinking just, just out of the box, what could be interesting things that could be shaped and that could be there, you know, visually just, just to inspire, just to get your mind going and, and get, get questions out of that. Uh, you know, other covers like first encounters with an alien race that comes from outer space that's, uh, that's based on a squid-like evolution. You know, that was a very interesting story. Um, you know, uh, stories about, you know, uh, also first contact, you know, during, during the different times and then things like, like uh, you know, uh, stations and, and habitats on different planets uh, and then envisioning things that have been talked about in terms of these very, very elaborate, uh, you know, disk in space, gravitational, uh, gra gravitational stations that could be enormous in size, almost like a colony ship. So different ideas, you know, behind that. Uh, and then life on Mars, you know, life on Mars and how we would colonize that and, and what it could look like. And 
different types of rockets and, and of course you know what can some forms of life look like uh, you know so there was also stories and other types of you know structures and, and spaceships uh, and then of course sometimes you know what would be if if anything you know so designing this shape purely for the beauty of a shape and see you know if it inspires and, 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 and raise some some interesting questions and then how we would you know uh, reshape our universe, you know, reshape planetary systems. I would be able to, uh, you know, uh, pull things. I mean, we've been talking yesterday about, you know, how to go and collect these asteroids and bring them to be able to mine them, you know, that's is a vision of how maybe, you know, these things could happen and how the spaceship could look like. Uh, different covers about, you know, uh, rocket ships taking off and, and different ideas. Um, this was an interesting one as well, based on actually some scenarios about solar sails, giant solar sails that would power spaceships in space. You know, so it's a much closer, closer science, fi uh, science fiction idea, but it's also been you know explored as well. You know, in terms of science, and so it was interesting to me to kind of get a visual to that, see what it would would look like. And then, you know, what, uh, what life out there in different worlds could look like. I was always fascinated about, you know, what could be and the possibilities of life and, and, and you know, what it would look like, you know, and always try to see it from, from different perspectives about, you know, it's like, would it be a happy place? Would it be not a happy place? Uh, kind of could get my mind going. And then ultimately that leads to that painting that I did, you know, two years ago. So kind of full circle in terms of that, that career of, of 20 years, you know, starting from little doodles of, of me wanting to be an astronaut to shaping my whole career and becoming a, an artist. And finally, you know, achieving, you know, a level where I could produce these kinds of paintings and, and be part of a, a whole big, you know, uh, ideas about thinking about what colony ship could be and, and how it could look like. And it's always been fascinating. So I'm always asking what's next, you know, and, and I, I've been looking at the last 10 years and, and as I was continuing my career, I mean, I also was looking at some, some important landmarks and important dates and it was just also as fascinating. I mean, you know, it's like over 30 shuttle missions happened, Galax launch for galaxy detections happened, two geology labs on Mars, Cassini orbit Saturns, supermassive black hole Sagittarius in the center of the Milky Way was, was discovered and confirm, you know, dark matter detected, big, big thing, you know, over seven alien planets detected, you know, and even even more today. So all these things are happening, and so that's, to me, because I'm always reading science fiction and I'm always very illustrating that, these things are happening at the same time and they excite me all the time. They kind of, you know, inspire me to continue because I'm seeing this happening. So the future that I'm envisioning, I'm seeing also being happening slowly, you know, in real life, and that's exciting. I've, I was also very fortunate over the last four years to work in the game industry, and particularly in Dallas with John Carmack uh, on Rage Project. And John Carmack is also someone who is passionate about space and who's been working on this idea about reusable rocket launch and, and the vertical takeoff. And there's a few, few independent companies who've been at it. And interestingly enough, a couple of days ago, they finally succeeded. Not John Carmack, but one of his competitors. Uh, finally, Grasshopper achieved, you know, the, the takeoff, the vertical, and then, you know, the flight that they were trying to achieve. And that, that was big. That was big news, at least to me. That's, that was, for several years, a big race for it, and they finally did it. And it's incredible to watch it. And then, two days ago, I also find out, now you can get a ticket to Mars. There is apparently a Mars One mission that now is recruiting and is already more than 30,000 people signing up and it's a one-way ticket. It's like uh, now it's happening, you can be going to Mars and you can be one of the first to colonize a planet. Uh, you know, what would happen there, I don't know, but, but it's happening. Their program is going to be starting, we're going to select a few people and there's going to be an eight-year training and if they're smart enough, you know, they'll, they'll get the right sponsors and make something happen that would kind of you know, excite people uh, worldwide and they could be having that as a TV show and try to get everyone excited about it and see what happens. And it could be, you know, wonderful or it could be a big disaster, but it's, it's moving forward. It's, it's, it's very exciting to see that happen. 
So I'm thinking, you know, all these projects here, part of that conference, Ikers, Elias, Tintin, and to me, after 20 years of career and seeing what I've seen and even seen what I've seen the last two days and I'm looking at this and I say, hell yes. I mean, we, 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 we need to do that. We, we have to do that. It, it's just, it's, it, to me, it's like I don't even question that it's not, it, it, it is going to happen. It's just a matter of time and, and determination. But there's absolutely no reason at the pace that things have been happening uh, that this project will not. I mean, they, they, will, they will happen. You know, they might take a different shape, but you know, I really believe that we'll get there. If we're already signing up people to go to Mars, and the people are signing up by 30,000 people so far, there's no reason this is not gonna happen. This is happening. And so, at the end of the day, I'm looking at myself and says, well, do I still wanna be an astronaut? Well, I mean, realistically, no, I'm not today, obviously. Uh, my path has been different, but if I look back, really, uh, I've been in space for the last 30 years. In my own mind as an artist, I've been doing that. And so I, I think somehow I've been an astronaut, you know, and I'm kind of very happy about it. So, so there's definitely no complaint there. You know, that dream actually somehow happened in a different way and, and it's very exciting. And so I'd like to close that, that presentation with Buzz Lightyear's famous lines. To me, it's to infinity and beyond. And this is how, where I hope we'll go. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. We have time for one brief question. What are you working on now and what's next? Too late. <laughs> now I'm working on the uh, Shanghai uh, Walt Disney theme park that's being built. And it's been a project that I've been working on for the last several years now. It's, it's a big, big project. Uh, I've worked on two upcoming movies, uh, one being the sequel for 300, The Rise of an Empire, that's coming, I think, in March, next March. And I've also worked on The Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, that's coming up next year. And I'm most likely going to be working on the next Marvel project in the next few weeks. So that's uh, what's been happening. And of course, you know, I do covers on a regular basis, always do. I think I'll never stop doing that. So I have a few new book covers coming out. And that's uh, pretty much it for now. And that's pretty much enough on my plate. <laughs> Are you going to do anything on uh, traversable wormholes and warp drives? Any kind of artwork relevant to those topics? Well, you know, it's always about people calling me and commissioning me based on what they'd like to see. And so I, I, I would say most likely, yes. I mean, it's, I don't see why not. <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, no, it's like to me, that's, that's the fun of doing what I do, is being able to participate to things that are sometimes not necessarily a science fiction illustration or something fantasy, but something that's more about how to illustrate art science. Thank you very much. Let's thank our speaker.